Um, it's week nine, you're halfway done. I think you've all have um, submitted your essays or you're just about done with your essay and you're submitting it tonight. Um, I will take it a little bit late, um, but there's a grading penalty unless you've discussed your reasons for having it late with me and we've made other arrangements. Um, Kelly Linfor talked about embracing all literacies because literacy is survival. So storytelling, books, survival techniques, actual survival techniques, um, the ability to get along with people, family literacies. And so we read a lot of different literacies, cultural literacies, um, heritage literacy, and all of those are valuable. I want to talk, we're going to transition into what's known as digital literacy, how to assess and evaluate what is true on the internet. Um, some other names for this might be information literacy or civic literacy. Either way, no matter what you call it, there's fake news out there. And fake news sometimes is used to refer to things that you know, like we don't like, so we call it fake because it's news that we want to discredit. But fake news is truly misinformation, false information that is spread. Now, this is not new. Um, there was fake news with conspiracy theories when I was a teenager. And there was no internet when I was a teenager, but the internet makes it a lot easier to spread. And the thing is, is we don't always realize when things are fake. In fact, and I do not lie, um, the first year I was, the third year I was teaching, I had a student who had posted some really false things in her paper and I asked where she got her information and she said she found it on the internet as if that credited it. And I wanted to, um, I wanted to share a video, but this video link seems like it's not working. It's, nope, it is not working. So, that's so sad. It was going to be fun. Um, uh, let me let me ask you. Let me stop the share since I can't access this video anyways. Or here we go. Here's a poll. Um, how do you access most of your news? Can you see this? Um, choose three of these things. Um, how do you access most of your news? Is it Instagram, radio, newspaper? Twitter, Facebook, Fox, MSNBC, CNN, or local TV? Can you see the poll? Can you see the poll? Yes, ma'am. OK. Um, how do you access your news? You can choose up to three of these. You just click on them to vote. I selected two where I get my news from and I put, I see there's a true or false, two true or false no, don't questions. Do, don't do the true or false questions. Okay. All Those right. are later. Just okay. do these questions. These are the only right. ones you need to worry about. Just choose how you get your news. Okay.
I don't see you all voting. I should be able to see this. Um, is there a reason why you're not voting? It won't let me submit the answers. Oh. Yeah, it will only let you if you put the true or false onto it. Uh, huh, Ezekiel, how were you able to? Because the true or false, yeah, oh, don't, so, yeah, don't do true or false. Okay, I didn't, but it's still not. I the thing is, is that I selected two of them before you said not to do them, and then it, it still doesn't say I can submit my answer. But maybe if it's okay, let's see. So try this again. Don't worry about true or false. Just yeah. worry about the news. Yeah. I selected the news that I choose from, but I can't submit it. So, like, That's maybe. That's so could weird. I, oh. um, yeah. Okay. And, uh, we could send it through the chat, maybe. Yeah, just if post it, it through the chat. How do you, how do you access news? Name your top ways. CNN, local TV. How about the rest of you? Post it on the chat. And if you never access news, you can post that too. Insta, CNN, Fox. Yeah. The rest of you. Forgot about Telemundo. I put Univision, Washington Post, New York Times, yeah. How confident are you that your news is accurate? Ezekiel? To be honest, I find it pretty hard to believe almost every news station, wherever we're getting news from. However, we have to be, like I try to be selective, but for me, it's kind of hard to see what's reliable nowadays with various sources saying different things. It really, really is difficult. And that's what digital literacy is about. It's about developing the skills to know what's true and what's not true. Because when we don't know what's true, when we get confused, when we start believing things that aren't true, we can end up in trouble. Now, this is a thing that happened back in 2016 um, before the last presidential election. Alex Jones started posting um, a story that he's the guy from Infowars. And he started posting a story that Comet Pizza um, was running a sex trafficking, a child sex trafficking um, ring in the basement of the pizza parlor. And people could order a child, um, so to speak, based on, you know, like the toppings that they ordered on their pizza. And who was in charge of the ring was Hillary Clinton. And this went around. I mean, it's scary because nobody wants, uh, you know, like uh, that would be a very, very bad thing. And, and of course the FBI said that wasn't happening, wasn't happening, but that just made people believe it more. And so it was on Insta, it was on Facebook, it was on Twitter, it was on the web, and people were explaining and explicating and justifying their belief in this thing. And then one man had had enough. And so he drove from another state into Maryland, 
and he shot up the pizza parlor. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. Um, by the way, Comet Pizza didn't even have a basement. And this man is serving time. And so believing, deeply believing something that was totally fake and then deciding to do something to rescue the children got this guy in prison. And it's not always that serious, but it can be serious. Here is something I saw on Facebook. And um, yeah, here's that circle. Eat, Ray, love. Rachel Ray finds inspiration in cooking her family and her dog. Well, I knew that wasn't true. She doesn't cook her family and she doesn't cook her dog. So um, what I was paying attention to as an English teacher in the, you know, like maybe 2012, is there were no commas. She finds inspiration and in, it should be in cooking comma, her family comma and her dog. And I thought, oh my gosh, this magazine didn't edit it correctly. And I so wanted to share it. And I thought the editor couldn't have missed that. And it took me a little bit, but I finally found the unedited copy where, yeah, the commas were there. And so with a lot of checking on the internet, I was able to find that I, you know, the editor hadn't do anything, done anything bad. And of course, um, it had just been Photoshopped. So I started paying attention to these false things. And so here is um, going to add a poll. Um, I need to, if this doesn't work, that's so, okay. Um, I'm gonna add a poll, true or false. And I think, true or false, um, let me give you some options. True, false, not sure. And then we'll just use this one over and over again. And I think this will work. Um, New share, back to the PowerPoint. Are you seeing the PowerPoint again? Yes. Okay. All right, let's see if this works. True or false? Um, That is not the right one. Okay, here we go. True or false? This is a picture of a shark tank at the Kuwait Science Center. And the shark tank collapsed and the sharks are now at the bottom of the escalator. five of you. I know there's 10. Okay. All right. So most of you are pretty positive that this is not true. And sure enough, how would you, if you saw this on Facebook, which is where I saw it initially, um, how would you know to find out if it was true or not? What would you do? Ezekiel? First of all, I would like to click on the link of where that information was posted from to make sure it's 
you know, even from a credible site, we don't even, you know, it, this is just pretty blatant. It's not saying um, where, the, you know, this is from. There's no news articles about it. It's hard to see the credibility. So that's where I would start. Yeah, and um, some of the rest of you who thought it was false, what made you think this was false? Just unmute yourself and share. I had already seen this um, and I like did background research on it and like I searched up the supposedly Kauai or science center and see, so I looked up if that was actually a thing. Yeah, um, there was no link on Facebook when I found it. Um, so yeah, uh, and there might not have been a link for you either, Lori. So looking at the Kuwait Science Center and Shark Tank, um, you would have found out that none of the links are working. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Um, turns out there isn't even a Shark Tank at the Kuwait Science Center. And um, this, this website is Snopes. I use Snopes a lot and um, it's a photo snapped. The escalator is a basement retail concourse in Toronto. And um, the sharks, I don't know where they came from, but yeah, totally, totally false. Um, Okay, so another one. I saw this one last spring. Amid a nationwide COVID-19 lockdown, Italians reported seeing wildlife such as swans and dolphins returning to newly vacant. Um, the bottom got chopped off. Um, is this true or false? How many of you saw this last spring? Oh, plus. Yeah. How many of you saw this last spring? I heard about it. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine shared it, and she's normally pretty good about this. She's also really concerned about um, climate change. How many of the rest of you saw this? Um, Lori, did you see this one? No, I did not. Taylor, did you see this one? I didn't see that one exactly, but I've seen something like it. Um, so true or false? I mean, this is definitely a picture of, um, this is definitely a picture of Venice. Are the swans and the dolphins back? At six of you. We are totally, we are totally divided. So three say true, three say false, three say not sure. And um, Snopes again, I believed it. I saw this, it came from a friend who I found very trustworthy. And Snopes said, it's a mix of true. Dolphins and swans were actually spotted in some waterways, but what's false is it's not new. They were there before. And I was so disappointed because I wanted it to be true. I wanted to think that something 
good happened because of COVID. And yeah, now you're not gonna believe anything. So true or false, I saw this one last week. Trump said that hundreds of governors are calling him. We only have 50. Think about that. Take all the time you need. Is it true or false? Did Trump say that? So now you get to vote again. Did he actually say that? True or false? By the way, this is totally anonymous. Nobody knows how you vote. So just click on a button and you're good. So this, let me show you the poll resort, the poll resort results. Two people thought it was true. Three thought it was false. And four said, not sure. A friend of mine posted this and I saw it and I said, well, I was in the not sure category. I was like, did he really say that? Really? And it turns out, cause I, it was false. He did not say hundreds of governors. He said he had hundreds of requests from governors. And so this one was not true. I was happy about that. Here's one last one, true or false. Trump just said the army took over the airports during the Revolutionary War. True or false? Did Trump say that? Okay, that's nine of you, so we'll stop that. It's like, we don't know what, I saw this one on the internet too. And let's find out. A little anticlimactic when it just goes around and around and it doesn't. Hmm. Why isn't this loading? Oh, here we go. Why isn't this launching? It worked before, but it's not gonna work now. Let me see if I can. Well, let me put, oh, here we go. And now I can't hear it. New York. 
and named after the great George Washington, Commander-in-Chief. Our Army manned the airport. It ran the ramparts. It took over the airports. It did everything it had to do. And at Fort McHenry, under the rocket's red glare, it had nothing but victory. And when dawn came, their star-spangled banner waved defiant. This one was true. Later on, he said it was um, uh, the teleprompter. But I caught something else in there that wouldn't have been entirely true. Did you catch that? How many of you were paying attention to your history? During the Revolutionary War, there was no Star Spangled Banner. That was written in the War of 1812. And Fort McHenry, that was the War of 1812. But that one was true. I, I, my point is not that Trump said something wrong or that, um, not that he said something wrong. My point is that some things on the internet are true and sometimes they're not. And sometimes we just don't know. And that's tough. Um, in the case of the Comet Ping Pong um, shooter, it cost him years with his kids. He had two young girls, which is probably why he was so disturbed by the news that the FBI wasn't going to do anything to stop it. Um, sometimes, and sometimes it just is confusing. Um, coronavirus misinformation. This was a new illness. Um, it was a new illness that started in China last fall and they discovered it and it spread and nobody knew anything about this illness. So we started reading things like cold weather can kill the virus or hot weather can kill the virus or it can be transmitted through mosquito bites. Um, it can be transmitted if you are breathing into a mask and you have it inside of you, you can infect yourself. I remember reading that. And so, yeah, this one really, really matters. Um, oh, I do have one more. My mom shared this with me, that mask wearing reduces oxygen up to 50% and it increases risk of CO2 poisoning. Um, it causes increased face touching, which can make you sick. Um, let's poll again, is this true or false? Okay, so 10 people have voted. And so I'm gonna end this and show you. And this is, this, this virus, which can make us sick. There's so much information going around that it's really, really hard to know. So four, four of you said it was false. Three said it was true and three said it's not sure. My mom shared this with me, um, not this meme, but a long, long um, email with lots of information and sources and, and um, so how do we know? How do we know what to believe when it comes to coronavirus?
what are some, because you can go on the internet, you can find, yeah, Ezekiel. I was going to say that looking at maybe the views of professional health uh, healthcare professionals, um, that might be the best route to take instead of just looking at those Google questions, can this kill the virus, can this, can that, because those can be from sources that, you know, are unreliable. So it's better to get, it might be a little bit better to get, um, to see the answers of healthcare professionals when it comes to determining whether certain aspects of, you know, what we think of the virus and how it spreads. Yeah, how so the, we, di yeah. Yeah, the dilemma is my mom actually was looking, some of her evidence was from health professionals. And then I started looking at, you know, like, what were their specialties? And um, what else do we know about those health professionals? Um, I did a Google search and um, um, I found a lot of sources saying, you know, like fact checking sources. Um, the thing is, is my, my search is gonna be different than my mom's search because my search is, um, What do you do? You all know why my search might be different than my mom's search? Because your mom might be trying to confirm her bias. Yeah, and if she's trying to confirm her bias, then Google is going to give her like, how do I? There are algorithms that the more we search things the more we get things that say the same thing. And so I was looking for specific types of sources that I consider to be credible. Um, and so that's what Google gives me first. My mom looks at different types of sources. And so that's what Google gives her first. And so, Digital literacy is important because most health professionals say that mask wearing is safe, that it prevents illness, and that everybody should wear masks. Um, so I want to put you into some um, breakout rooms. Let me. Um, stop share. And what I want to do is um, I want you to ask this question. Um, how do we know what's true? And what are some things you've had to double check or you're not sure of right now? Because I want to keep this relevant. So what kinds of things have you had to double check. How did you do that? And what are things you aren't sure of right now? That's your question. Um, I'm gonna put you into small groups. Um, of Two to three people per group. And um, no, three to four, okay? So ask that question in your room and just talk about it, okay? I really like, Audrey, that you focused on, you know, like, what are they leaving out? It isn't, uh, you know, like, definitely, we need to think about what they are saying, 
but we also think about need to think about what they're not saying because sometimes they're leaving out information that could be really helpful in ascertaining or determining if something is true. And yes, there's a lot of fake news out there. Um, I think campaign commercials are filled with false information or misleading information. And then we need to think, you know, like, how do we know what is true? Is Amar Kampanajar, is he really a socialist? I don't think so, but that's what Daryl Issa says. And so here we are, is like we have one person saying one thing, another person saying another. My mom says a mask will make me sick. Dr. Fauci says the mask will keep me safe. And I have to decide. And this is tough. And so this is what we're going to focus on um, right now in this session is how do we develop strategies for understanding what's true? Um, let me go back to the PowerPoint really, really quickly. Um, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Once again, it's like, it's like, I don't know how to use Zoom. Maybe I don't, it's hard to know. So the last slide I wanted to, um, I can't, I can't do this. Okay. Um, here, I saw this on the internet this morning. Uh, the thing about quotes from the internet is it's hard to verify their authenticity. And I'm pretty sure Abraham Lincoln did say that. Um, so a few of you have already posted on the discussion board. This is what you're gonna be doing this week. There um, is a, yeah. There is a very short video, I think it's two minutes and 12 seconds from PBS, and then a short article from NPR. Um, and they're both about the same thing, which is how do we know what's true? And um, they're both about the tendency of students to believe false news. And by the way, I think that it's not just students that believe false news. Remember, um, the two people that, the one that posted the false meme about Trump and the one who posted that quarantine had cleaned up the Venice Canal, those were from colleagues, people I totally respect, people who tend to fact check, and yet they shared things that were not true. And my mom, she shared things that were not true. And so none of them are students. And so we need to develop strategies, whether we're students or not, but these articles are focused on students. And so you're gonna be reading those and then you're going to be providing a short summary of a specific aspect of the video or the article, but make sure you've read both, you've looked at both of those and then respond in some way by talking about your own experiences with fake news or your own challenges to know the difference, okay? That's what this week is all about. I wanted to keep it light so that you would have time to finish up your essays the best you could. And yeah, that's what we did. So next week we jump in and we start really developing strategies for understanding what's true and what's not true. Any questions? I'm done. We're done a little early today. Questions for me? All right then. You are free to leave, go to your next class or go to work 
or start your homework. I'm going to stop the video.